This is a standard bore Dodge Cummins 12 valve. So I'm uh, just getting started with checking some piston ring end gaps. And these uh, rings, they're marked fairly nicely, but there's something I would think maybe they could do differently. So here's the top ring, and the next one is the intermediate ring. But look how they have them marked. They're both marked top, so what they mean is up. So that's the up, upper part of the ring, but they're uh, also nicely marked with that dot. Very typical for piston rings to have that dot on them to uh, mark which way is up. So I've got one of the uh, top compression rings in the bore now. What I did is I just gently squeezed it together and got it started and then slid it down there with a piston to sort of uh, get it squared up in the bore and I checked the shop manual and it was showing 16 thou on the minimum and 27 thou on the maximum so I've got 16 thou in there right now and it just nicely fit I didn't have to force it but it's a very nice uh, I'd rather have it closer to 16 than uh, closer to the maximum because that's going to reduce blow by having that gap more on the minimum side. So I'd like to check all of the uh, top compression rings, all of the intermediates, and uh, even the oil ring has a minimum and a maximum. So I've got the uh, spring removed from there and I'd like to uh, slide that into the bore as well and check that and uh, I've got specs from my shop manual for that clearance as well. This is the upper compression ring and uh, it's actually tapered. It, I think it's uh, visible on the screen here on the camera. So I'm showing that and it matches the piston as well. The, the piston is, is also tapered. This isn't the one that goes in the, uh, in the block but here's a piston for an example. Maybe that taper is visible on the upper groove, not sure. And the intermediate does not have a taper near as I can tell, and it's not as wide either. But it does have a notch. Maybe I can show that as well. Hmm, I'm not sure if that's showing. Yeah, there, I think that's just visible now. So there's a notch in it right there. This block has very slight ridge at the top of the cylinders. And uh, so the, uh, the cylinder will be worn bigger at the top than it is at the bottom. So I'm just checking one of the rings here more towards the top where it would be worn slightly bigger. And so I couldn't really get 18 thou in there, but I could get 17 in there. So that's 17 thou. I'm going to slide this one down to the bottom or further towards the bottom like I had earlier and see if that makes a difference if I can still get 17 in that gap. Yep, 17 still goes in there. So very little wear on these cylinders, but on worn cylinders it's important that the uh, rings are checked further down the cylinder. Actually, uh, if they were checked right at the uh, point where the uh, rings go the furthest down, that would be the most accurate. So I think these are going to be okay. Check them at, uh, they all fit 16 thou nicely. So I think that should be all right. If I had a ring gap that I thought was too tight, there is a way to enlarge it with this tool here. And there's a grinding disc. It grinds from both sides. 
So and there's little stops here. So if I would take a piston ring and put it up against those stops and squeeze it up against that disc and uh, try to uh, keep it uh, centered and then uh, turn with the other hand on that uh, grinding disc and real careful not to take too much off. Also, I'm uh, keeping the rings organized to the cylinders that they were fitted to. So one, two, three, four, you know what I mean? So if these rings fit cylinder number one, then I want to make sure they go back in there because they've been verified to have a correct fit. So anyways, guys, another video. Thanks for checking in.